Right now, my internet speed is around 500 megabits per second. But trust me, it wasn't always like this. Back in the day, my maximum speed was barely 8 megabits per second. Yeah, that's like 6 times slower than what I have now. It was so annoying that every single day I would literally sit there dreaming about having fast internet. And now, well, I finally have it. But the crazy part is, I don't actually feel like I made the right decision. After hearing my story, you'll realize that just having the fastest internet doesn't automatically make you feel good. I'll tell you exactly how it felt after I finally switched to a better connection, and even more importantly, how I managed to get this kind of internet without living in some super rich country and without paying a fortune for it. So yeah, let's dive into it. When I lived with my parents in a small settlement, the internet speed there was just straight up miserable. The best we could get was 8 megabits per second and that's on a good day. Downloading a single game would take me days. Seriously, it was some real survival mode conditions. I still remember clearly back then GTA 5 was about 55 gigabytes in size and to me that number felt absolutely insane. Most games weren't even close to that big. Or if they were, I simply didn't know about them because downloading something that huge sounded like a nightmare. Anyway, with that ancient internet I could barely pull 1 megabytes per second. It took me about 50 minutes just to download 1 gigabyte. So you can imagine how much time it took to download a 55 gigabyte game. Yeah, about 14 hours straight just to get GTA 5 on my computer. And the funniest part, back then I didn't even know the fastest internet existed. I wasn't sitting there blaming my connection, I was blaming the game developers. Like, why can't these companies just make smaller games? What's wrong with them? That's the level of my logic back then. Everything changed when one day a friend from Discord casually mentioned that he downloaded GTA 5 in like 2 hours. I was just sitting there stunned like what how how is that even possible i straight up thought he was trolling me but then he showed me a screenshot of his internet speed and bro i was speechless his connection was insanely fast compared to mine and you know what's even crazier? He told me that his internet wasn't even considered fast where he lived. His provider offered him 100 megabit per second and it was literally the cheapest plan available. Hearing that made me feel so damn bad. I can't even describe it. And that's when I started really digging into how the internet works. I spent hours on YouTube, asked everyone I knew, tried every tip and trick to somehow boost my speed even just a little. I moved the router, changed DNS servers, rebooted the router a hundred times, called the provider to yell at them, you name it, I tried it. I watched tons of videos, read a mountain of articles, and finally I found the real reason. Turn out my internet was using ADSL technology. If you don't know what that is, here's the quick version. ADSL stands for Asymmetric Digital Subscriber Line, and back in its time it was revolutionary, because it let people get internet through regular old phone lines without needing anything fancy. Yeah, back in the late 80s, that was considered high speed, but today, it's a dinosaur. It's painfully slow compared to modern standards, and the wild part is, I wasn't even born yet when that technology came out. Most countries started phasing it out in the 2010s when fiber optic technology showed up and absolutely crashed ADSL, being about 100 times faster and way more stable. Fiber optic used actual fiber cables instead of regular wires. And the biggest difference between ADSL and fiber optic is obviously the speed. If ADSL can reach a maximum of around 12 Mbps, fiber optic can go up to 1000 Mbps which is honestly a mind-blowing improvement in an instant. But not every country rushed to get rid of ADSL because installing fiber all across the entire country costs a lot of money. The technology itself requires a huge amount of investment, so our provider decided to start implementing it only in cities, while the rest of the areas were just left with ADSL so that at least some kind of internet would exist. Of course my settlement wasn't on the list, so we stayed stuck with ADSL technology, but I didn't even realize that until 2015, because back then I simply didn't understand how all this worked. After learning all this, I went to the provider's website to check the tariffs they offered, and I noticed one really shady move from them. It turned out that I was paying for a plan that was supposed to give me 100 megabit per second, but because we didn't have fiber technology in our area, I could never actually reach 100 megabit per second speeds. 
Still, I was paying the same price as people who had real fiber optic connections. That made me so angry at the time. Like seriously, what the hell? What kind of unfair system is that? So I called them immediately to sort it out. They told me, unfortunately, that technology is not yet available in your region, but we are working on it. As soon as we finish, we'll let you know. I asked them about the pricing. Why was it so overpriced considering the technology was outdated? I argued that the lack of technology wasn't my fault, but theirs. And they told me, please read the contract before connecting. I was so furious at the time, you can't even imagine. And the craziest thing was that this provider was basically a monopoly because they were backed by the government. So I didn't have any choice, I just had to be patient and wait for the technology to come. But most likely, they didn't even plan to fix anything because I waited until 2020. And only after that, for a completely different reason, we moved to the city with my parents. And of course, after moving, I finally connected to the internet again, but this time I read the contract very carefully. And the speed I choose was 500 megabit per second because that was the fastest plan available in the entire country. And it felt like breathing fresh air for the first time. I could finally do whatever I wanted without any lack. And I could download anything in seconds. I even managed to download GTA 5 in about 30 to 40 minutes. That absolutely blew my mind. Of course, the size of GTA 5 had grown a little bit since back then, but whatever. Now, you might have a question. Did they ever install fiber technology in my old settlement? Well, you'll be shocked. Absolutely not. I checked their website again after some time and found out they're still working on it. Bro, I seriously don't get them. In the year 2025, people are still stuck on ADSL technology and the craziest thing is, they only mention that it's ADSL in tiny little letters at the very end of the contract. Some elderly people don't even understand how the internet works. And these companies are just draining money from them. To me, that's nothing short of a scam. But of course, the happiest news is that now they no longer have a monopoly. Some private companies finally came into the market and started genuinely working to connect fiber optic technology to every house. And now, the people who live in my old settlement can finally enjoy proper fiber optic internet too. And when it comes to switching to the fastest internet, I gotta admit one thing right away. The title of this video is a little bit clickbait because honestly, switching to fastest internet is never a bad thing. It's not like you're gonna regret it completely. But there's something that I have to point out. Something you probably would never even expect until you have your own fast internet. After connecting to this crazy fast 500 megabit per second internet, I started noticing a few things that were, let's say, a little annoying. First off, the Wi-Fi connection wasn't stable at all. I don't know if that's the provider's fault or not, but when they set up the internet in my home, they gave me their standard stock router. And bro, that thing was absolutely trash. I don't get why they do that. Like, you're selling high-speed internet, why would you pair it with the cheapest router you could find? Through an Ethernet cable, everything was fine, no problems there. But when it came to Wi-Fi, bro, the connection couldn't even handle going through one wall. I'm serious, if you're in the next room, it's like you're back on that 8 Mbps life. I had this theory, just a random though. Honestly, that may be the faster the internet, the more unstable it gets. But I haven't properly tested that yet. Like I said, it's just a theory. Maybe one day I'll check it by lowering the speed and seeing what happens. But back then, I had no choice but to buy a new router. So that's exactly what I did. I went and bought a Xiaomi router for A. And let me tell you, that thing helped a lot. Now I can actually enjoy the full power of 5 megabit per second both on my PC and my phone. The Wi-Fi is way more stable at least most of the time. And yeah, if you want to get that router too, I'll leave a link in the description. But then there's the second thing, and honestly it's kind of funny when you think about it. The 500 megabit per second itself feels kind of useless. Like seriously, what are you even doing with that much speed on a regular day? Other than downloading big games or files, there's not much you actually need it for. You can watch 4K videos on YouTube perfectly fine with just 100 Mbps. You can scroll through TikTok, Instagram, whatever, with even less. And when it comes to online games, your internet speed barely matters. It mostly depends on the game servers and how far they are from you. So, 500 megabit per second is honestly more for places like big offices or universities, where a ton of people are connecting at the same time. For an ordinary home setup, 100 megabit per second is already more than enough. I mean, you're not downloading 100 gigabyte games every single day, right? And even if you wanted to, a lot of websites limit your download speed anyway. So you can't use that 500 Mbps everywhere even if you try it. 
But then you might ask, if 500 megabit per second is kinda overkill, why did I go for it? The reason is simple, I just wanted to experience it. I wanted to feel what it's like to have the fastest internet available in my city. Because in my city, the maximum speed anyone could get was 500 Mbps, no more, no less. So I thought, why not? Let's see what this monster connection feels like. And I'll be honest, I never really thought about the fact that sometimes I wouldn't be able to use its full potential. So yeah, most of the time I'm probably using just a part of it, but paying the full price. Which to be fair is about $15 a month. Not that bad when you think about it. But anyway, let's talk about the positives. Because honestly, fiber optic technology is amazing. I've been using this internet for about 3 years now. And every single day, it still feels like a blessing. Ever since switching to fiber, I've had zero lag, no disconnects, no random drops in speed. I can watch YouTube videos in 4K at 60 frames per second without any buffering. I can download huge video games in minutes instead of hours. And one of the biggest pluses, when I'm editing videos, I don't have to prepare all the materials in advance anymore. Back in the day, I had to download everything before I could even start editing. And that wasn't exactly fun. Now I can grab files on the fly while working because I know it'll take just a minute or two at most. So in the end, yeah, it's really good. Of course, it comes with its own downsides like everything else, but overall, I'm happy with it. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and drop a comment letting me know how fast your internet is. Take care and see you next time.